Uh, hi, everybody. I'm uh, Alex Bosworth. I work at uh, Lightning Labs. And uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit at a high level about how uh, at Lightning Labs we're building on the market dominance of Bitcoin. Um, so kind of cover Bitcoin at a high level and also um, like the, the vision and the progress of the Lightning Network, uh, which we're working on. Um, so uh, I, I like to think about uh, market dominance um, and not in terms of how people sometimes uh, use it. Like they look at uh, websites like CoinMarketCap and there's this Bitcoin dominance index. And it's saying like, if we if we merged all the different to tokens together and, and took their total uh, kind of fictional uh, market capitalization number, uh, how much would Bitcoin have? Um, but I, I, I think that that has kind of the seeds of a good idea in terms of like uh, measuring our progress, but I don't think it is, uh, people should read too much into it. And I think it should be scoped. So like one major problem with this is that uh, that market dominance often includes tokens, which are just basically the same thing as what we already have, like fiat wrapped into a token or um, some kind of like um, centralized uh, representative token, like a stock or something. Um, so those things are, are maybe interesting to, to various people, but I don't think that they're part of uh, what we should consider to be dominance, because what I consider to be dominance means that we're, we started a revolution here in a specific category. And the category is that we're trying to make a new type of money. Like, you know, you have the US dollar, you have the Euro, and we're trying to make a new one, which would be Bitcoin. Um, and in that category, I would say, even even in the, in the, in the category of everything that people normally talk about, Bitcoin is, is dominating to a large degree. But in, in the category of money, what are people treating as uh, kind of like a, a global currency? Bitcoin is just absolutely dominating. I mean, I, I wouldn't even say that it's close. Like um, the, there's maybe the dollar and the euro and people's native currencies, and then there's Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is really doing well in this, in this area. Um, so uh, the, the question is like, how do we build on that success? Um, and uh, if, you, if you think about like what you need to do to build on success, um, the, the first step of building anything is that you need to kind of have ideas for what you could do. And um, at the Lightning Network, uh, we're building on this old, old idea of a payment channel. Um, and uh, even, even after that was kind of envisioned, it didn't come into fruition until um, there was another kind of a breakthrough idea, which was what if we could link up these different payment channels together and even that it took, a, took a long time to um, be realized in any code. And that's the second step is that you realize that this, this long-term, first you talk about the vision or you, you think about the idea and then you, you build the code, you build the proof of concept. And, you, and once you launch that, um, you're, you're not done yet. Um, so there's kind of like a long road between when you come up with a breakthrough, when you first um, establish implementation of, of this breakthrough, and then as you grow, you're solidifying the breakthrough. So you're, you're, you're making the implementation of that idea more and more real. And you're also um, creating new offshoots of that idea. And that's, that's what I would consider the Lightning Network to be in terms of uh, how it builds on Bitcoin. I would say Bitcoin is like uh, the trunk of the tree and Lightning is a branch that goes out of that tree. Um, so we're trying to... Uh, not necessarily reshape Bitcoin itself, but to create kind of a, an offshoot idea. Um, the, 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 the way I like to think about it as well is um, what can we do with Bitcoin? What, like if, if Bitcoin is a revolution and it allows us to, to, um, to, if it really fundamentally changes things, then what can we do today that we couldn't do before? Um, and, uh, there, I think there's a lot of different ideas, um, but they're, they're not necessarily easy. Um, so the things that I think are making the most progress today are the Lightning Network, which I'm working on. And then there's also um, a lot of progress has been made in um, coin joint conglomerations. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, okay, we have this, we have this currency that, that, that has made some real progress and it's, it's achieved kind of like that network effect of people treat it as currency. But now we need to make channels so that, that, so that uh, we're going to expand the utility of, of just daily type of usage of, of, of paying. And we also need to make this a, a private experience. We need to make it uh, 
because that's 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 also um, you know something that that uh, that doesn't exist in the old world that you don't really have that um, global privacy that uh, that people want. Um, so we're, we're trying to make it, make these extensions. Um, and then, uh, we're building on, um, on tooling that has been added to Bitcoin over time. So, uh, the, the lightning network itself, um, was conceived with all sorts of limitations that, uh, Bitcoin, uh, at the consensus level was changed in order to better support. So, uh, there used to be like a limited lifetime on channels because Bitcoin didn't support, um, uh, in the scripting, the uh, time locks that were needed to make unlimited lifetime channels. And over time, the, the, the implementations of Lightning were, were progressed in terms of their conceptualization. And uh, Bitcoin was changed to support those future networks. And it's, Bitcoin continues to change. So in the future, I will expect to be, mo to, to be more very big projects be launched on, on Bitcoin as there's uh, currently consensus changes being worked out at the base layer. Um, such as uh, groups, payment control groups, uh, which kind of allow you to um, create a group of people who have uh, their own specific rules about how money can move between them. Um, so you can kind of like make sub, uh, sub currencies within Bitcoin that are, uh, that are between a big group of people. And um, also uh, Oracle contingent payments. Um, so uh, the, with the signature upgrades, um, potentially more assets can be represented on, um, on Bitcoin uh, in terms of trades, um, so th those are those are just uh, ideas, um, and it takes a lot of work to actually make to to, to turn an idea into a reality. So, uh, just to go into more detail on what the idea of Lightning Network is, if you haven't heard about it, um, so what we want to deliver is we want to deliver payments that are absolutely tiny, um, just arbitrarily small. And that's a revolutionary idea. You can't just go out today and make a global payment to anybody in the world of an arbitrarily small size. Um, that, that doesn't exist yet. So that's, that's a revolutionary idea. Um, we want the uh, finality of payments. We want uh, the, 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 when you make a payment to somebody anywhere in the world, that to be practically instantaneous. I mean, uh, given some speed of light barriers. And we want this to, um, that if, if the network grows and it grows to encompass everybody in the world, we want that to um, maintain uh, small transfer fees. So we want to make a model because uh, the, in the blockchain model, um, the more it grows, um, the more congested it gets. Um, so we want to have a, a, a scalable design so that the more it grows, uh, your business, your usage of it is not affected. You, you're still able to pay people at the same rate that you were before. Um, and uh, it's not just Bitcoin's blockchain that's been affected by um, this this design problem is that there's, you know, any blockchain that follows a similar model will be um, impacted if it wants to maintain decentralization of any kind. Um, so, uh, the, and then the final thing that we want to deliver with Lightning is we want it, we want this to also have good privacy characteristics. We want it to make it um, so that people can influence your transactions and, and that, we, that the transactions themselves can carry more data and that they can be more sophisticated and to be built into, um, and to be, uh, ever better. So we want the protocol to evolve and, and, and have more and more features over time. Um, so where do we stand now? I mean, the, the Lightning has been in the works for, for, for quite a while and I've been working at Lightning Labs for uh, over two years now. Um, and uh, when I joined, they, they were also already well into building um, an implementation. Um, and so I would say we're still in the, in the stage of, the, of the, uh, creating the, the the basics, the, the the proof of concepts, and the implementations of that idea, and uh, a lot has been done. So um, we we started from that original set of papers and set of ideas, and today we have uh, Lightning Network support in Electrum, and we have it in uh, Lightning Lightning Labs is working on LND, and Blockstream is working on C Lightning, and there's uh, Async Labs and uh, Async that they are working on. Um, Claire, and then there's Chaincode Labs uh, and uh, Square, who have contributed to the uh, Rust Rust Lightning project. Um, so we've got these great uh, implementations out there that are all kind of coming together around a common protocol. 
And then something that people forget is that you also need a whole ecosystem of software. So you need to have uh, management software, tooling software, infrastructure software. And so um, we're seeing that like ecosystem of services and tooling all come out on top of these uh, basic platforms. And so there's been a huge, that's been a huge growth, uh, a huge sector of growth in Lightning um, that's critical for us to, to, to bring maturity to, to the project. Um, so, uh, where we aren't at yet is we don't have full maturity of, of the lightning network. And, and this is where we need help. And this is where there's opportunity lies, um, is that we need to make lightning into something that is more fully realized. So like you have, you have Bitcoin and Bitcoin has been around 10 years and Bitcoin started with plenty of problems and lack of tooling. And, you know, the services were very immature. You had to, you know, wire money and you had to stand in line to get your Bitcoins. And the Bitcoin software was always blowing up and people didn't know the best practices for it. And over time, over, over many years, that, that was evolved and it's, it's still evolving. But uh, I would say Bitcoin is at a very mature state um, and Lightning is more towards the, the beginning of the, that process. Um, and and the, the areas that we need to improve or we need to improve the security of, of the implementations. Um, so that's a, that's a, both at the implementation level, uh, LND just had a couple of uh, security vulnerabilities that were announced um, and it's, it's had one also in, in the past. Um, and th that, that kind of stuff needs to be um, locked down. And also the protocol itself needs to be improved as far as security goes. And, and as far and security is, is two parts. One is, um, one is the, uh, the safeguarding against loss of funds. And the other one is making it costly to attack the, the system. So uh, preventing denial of service. So we have two um, upgrades that are queued up. One is a, a new version of Lightning Channels, a, a new protocol. And uh, that will uh, come, into, come into play um, hopefully within the next year. And then there's a, there's a, there's a next version, a version three of, of the channels um, that is, uh, building on top of potential future consensus changes that are coming that are coming to the Bitcoin base layer. Um, and th those are called, uh, respectively, the, the V2 is called anchor channels and the uh, V3 will be called L2 channels. Uh, and those should improve the security and reduce the cost based on analysis of, that we've done kind of in the field. Um, and uh, another thing that, that, that is, a, is a big limitation in Lightning is that um, you can't arbitrarily move money around um, because uh, payment channels are, as a design, are limited in terms of how much uh, capital can move through them. You can only move as much as has been committed to in the beginning. And this creates kind of an upper limit for moving money around uh, across the network um, because you have a, a flow graph and you can't exceed uh, the, um, the minimum of the, the routing nodes um, that, that uh, lie in between you and your destination. Um, so uh, this, in order to uh, more efficiently move the, move the graph around to where, where money needs to be, be going, um, one project that I've been working on at Lightning Labs is this project called Lightning Loop. And uh, the idea is that we uh, merge the Lightning Network and the Bitcoin Network so that when you need to move uh, liquidity that break in a way that breaks the, the f those flow barriers, you can go to the chain and use the chain because the chain is not limited by the, that payment channel concept of uh, capacity of upfront capital. And you can use the chain there to, um, to uh, create, to flow the capital in the way that it wants to go. Um, and so we're providing a, a kind of a, a coordination service um, called Lightning Loop to help make that happen. Um, and uh, that's something that we need to progress, but it's already out there. Um, and then an, another thing that I think needs to be built um, for Lightning is that it, we need, um, we, we recently introduced a new uh, way to extend Lightning with arbitrary data. Um, and that's a called TLV. So basically just tagged values. Um, so key value pairs in payments. Um, and, and that's really at the, at the very beginnings of what it could accomplish because uh, what, what I'd like to see for Lightning to really progress is that it needs to have more utility. And one of the, one of the best utilities that Lightning could offer is that it can, it can offer the foundation for other protocols. And I think we're seeing that with Bitcoin at the high level is that other people are trying 
are, are trying to make uh, cool, new, interesting applications, but then they realize that they need money for those applications and, you know, like lending applications or something like that. And so what they tried to do before is they tried to, oh, well, let's just invent our own currency. Um, and because inventing currency is hard, they're, fig they're finding out that like that they, they, they're now having to create two major, major applications. And it is, it's, it's unworkable. Um, it's, it's, you know, people don't want to have some random, random currency uh, with this application. They would like to have a, a currency that makes sense to them, whether it's fiat or it, it's, uh, it's a, a more decentralized version, um, which would be Bitcoin. Um, that's what they're choosing more and more. So I'd like to see the same thing happen with Lightning, where people who are making interesting pro protocols, like uh, maybe shared mess, like uh, this decentralized messaging or decentralized fi file sharing, or even centralized um, protocols that, that um, are kind of commodities. So like commodity storage providers that they build in Lightning at the, at the ground level. Um, and they're able to take advantage of those streaming payment possibilities. Um, so, uh, one thing I think it's important to keep in mind is like, w why are we even doing all this? Um, because there are other, other ways to achieve the same goals that, uh, that lightning achieves. Um, so, uh, I'm not necessarily saying that, that lightning is, is the correct way to go. Um, like I encourage people to, to try different things. Um, and I even think like, if you just take what already works and you make a copycat version of it, that that's that's easy. Um, that's that's like lower risk. You can say, okay, well, I can see that the Bitcoin blockchain is working, um, and, and that's something that I worked on um, before I worked on Lightning. I worked on a private blockchain project um, that was in coordination with the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and uh, the Bank of England, and it was to do a private gold blockchain to represent gold tokens. And what they wanted is is just something that was a copy of Bitcoin the copy of the Bitcoin protocol because they said, oh, well, this is actually tested. And if there were problems with it, it would have been found already. And, and that's easy. And doing, doing the, the, easy, the easy thing it often, often does work. Um, like I, I can remember uh, Microsoft had this problem um, where they had this successful project, revolutionary project, uh, DOS, and it met a market, it had a good market fit. And uh, a lot of people have built stuff on it. And then when they, but they realized it was kind of a dead end, um, that there was just these scaling problems of, of it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't grow to, to service all the people in the world. So they had a, a project that they created called Cairo um, that would uh, kind of be a reinvention of, uh, of Windows uh, based on a more, uh, a more scalable design, Windows NT. And they said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll ship this. Um, but they kind of got lost in the weeds because it was, it was just complicated to deliver that. And it's, it's not easy to build these breakthrough products. So another team was, was, was developed, which was the Windows 95 team. And they just took DOS and, and they, they just uh, papered over and pretended like it was a revolution. And that actually worked for, for a good long time. There was Windows 95 and Windows 98 and Windows 98 SE. And then after a while, they were able to... Um, to transition themselves into a revolutionary concept, which was the, the NT eventually did become the, the platform that, that Windows that Windows operated on, um, and it was a huge improvement. Um, so uh, I would say, like that's that's kind of what we're trying with with Lightning is that we're trying like a moonshot program, and if it, it might fail completely, but we know that uh, because we we took that time at the idea stage to say, okay, payment channels, do they make sense? Does a network of payment channels make sense as a, as a concept? And um, then the, the rest is just, can we realize that idea? Um, and uh, so what we're trying to do is really expand the capability set of Bitcoin here, not just by a, an optimization factor. Um, so, you know, if you'd say that Bitcoin's transaction per second would be seven, we would want to make it seven million, but an optimization could be, let's just make it 70 or 700. Um, so that's kind of the difference between what we're working on and the, uh, the concept that a lot of people are working on. Um, and, you know, I, I'd like to, uh, give some shout outs to other projects that are, that are working on, um, kind of derivative ideas of the blockchain. Um, so, so people are making side chains, um, and they're placing BTC in different areas, which I think is interesting because Bitcoin, the blockchain, the Bitcoin blockchain is not made to do lots of different uh, exotic things. It's made to be a currency for the world. Um, 
So, but if, if you will have a good currency, you want to be able to use it in other places. So people are realizing that with like uh, the, the block streams, um, liquid side chain and other side chains like risk. Um, and uh, I think other people are making interesting um, like services software um, like uh, Ledger X uh, allows you to uh, make more um, complex uh, contracts for um, speculating on Bitcoin. So you can say, um, I'm going to sell an option to buy at a future price, like a covered call, um, and, or I'm going to uh, get a US dollar loan and I'm going to stake some of my Bitcoin for that loan, like with BlockFi. Um, and then we're seeing more and more um, Bitcoin uh, expansion into more and more places, which is further uh, cementing that network effect. So, you know, every country has, has a Bitcoin exchange accessible and there's uh, dollar cost averaging platforms just to meet every single market niche in terms of those people who are need to connect to that, to, to onboard onto the, onto the Bitcoin money. Um, and that's something that I think we need to do if we want to maintain this dominance. So we need to just keep at uh, bringing Bitcoin into every sphere. And, uh, you know, you can't, you can't kind of get lax because uh, even though we have this total dominance today, there's a potential future where um, people uh, realize that there's a huge profit motive if they just uh, uh, create a new, a new currency to compete with Bitcoin. Um, and they just stockpile a bunch at the beginning and then they, they uh, either make a compelling dream of them taking over from Bitcoin or maybe even they're, they're fully committed to it. Um, so we need to um, be competitive there. And the way I think we need to be doing that is that uh, instead of chasing the, the, you know, the, the common trends, I think we need to keep doing this. Um, what we're doing with Lightning is we, we have this idea of uh, this concept that we've explored as an idea first, and we've kind of uh, gotten review on it from a lot of people and figured out all of the weaknesses and strengths of it. And that just takes a lot of time. So it, it kind of precludes a, the, the uh, trend chasing uh, kind of aspect of development. And I think it, the, the, the thing we need to really also be accepting of is that um, we have Bitcoin as the base here. And when we're making a new branch, it might not work. So some implementation of this idea, it might totally fail. Um, some protocol that we built as a, as a derivative of Bitcoin, it might totally fail. And um, that's okay, that, that what we want is to just have the, um, the upside, if it does succeed, then we can kind of uh, cement it into place and continue on from there. And that's kind of the next steps for Lightning. So once we can cement this protocol as a protocol that uh, is widely used and is solid, it's low cost, it's secure, we have a good market out there, we have, the, we have a good network effect, um, what can we then do is we can make branches of our own. So we can say other people can build, um, build things on top of the Lightning Network. Um, and that's kind of the dream of any, of any like foundational protocol um, is that you have these branches and the branches have branches. Um, and uh, I think that, uh, like I said before, the, the uh, sub protocols could, could grow out of the Lightning Network that use the Lightning Network as a way to just uh, deal with uh, monetization issues. And any kind of like peer-to-peer -peer protocol is going to have, a, have problems where um, you have incentive issues and money is a great way to solve incentive issues. Uh, I mean, there's other ways. So like, if you look at BitTorrent before Bitcoin, they were dealing with like, what happens if somebody tries to download too much? How do I stop them? Um, and, and they have kind of like a, more egalitarian way to stop people, which is that you have to um, kind of give up some of your um, some of your uploading in order to get some downloading. But uh, we could more abstractly represent that with money, and that means we could we could offer more app, more a wider breadth of solutions. Um, and and other things I think that are hard problems that we can solve is we can do arbitrary asset transfers cross cross asset transfers on the network, and we can make channels instead of two parties, we can make them tons of parties. That would expand the, a bit, the, the potential reach of the Lightning Network. Um, so uh, this is something that I'm working on um, at Lightning Labs, and I work on uh, kind of the infrastructure side of things. I used to work at uh, Bitco, which uh, did a lot of work uh, to support the exchanges and um, making APIs so that people can build businesses and applications on top of this stuff. And uh, that's kind of similar to what I'm working on now at Lightning Labs is that 
uh, I want to make it uh, tools that uh, people who want to build on this platform can use and be supported and they can think more about their business and less about the details of the protocol um, because that's just super important to, to making um, to making these platforms work and to, and to making them firmly established. Um, so you can follow me on Twitter and Alex Bosworth on there. And I, I try to post updates every day about how things are going in Bitcoin and on the Lightning Network.